So it's at this stage you could say, I've got the data I need, so I'm now gonna start building my visuals. But I think it's really important that we delve into the powerful tool in the back end of Power BI that so far has made it so easy, uh, just by a, a couple of clicks, to get our data to this stage. And that tool is called Power Query. In order to access Power Query, we just need to go to our transformation data. So you could, if you click the drop down, just make sure you go to transform data. Although I'm just gonna click the button as a whole. And you can see we've now got Power Query Editor opened up in another window, which luckily has now come onto this page here. And we can see our two queries. So we've got Task CSV and XLSX. So just to have a quick look at the overview of Power Query in terms of navigation, over the left-hand side, we have our queries pane. Like I say, you can see our two queries. And for definition sense, in Power Query, we'll be referring to these as queries because that's what they are. They are querying a, a source location to allow us to bring the data back. Whereas once we get into the front end, of, front end of Power BI, sorry, where we just were, then of course they are then referred to in their final state as tables. So this is our queries pane. And if you had obviously more than two, which I'm sure most reports probably will, you would see them all listed here. The next section we've got is our data preview. So it's just a table which allows us to interact with and view the data as it currently sits. Over the far right hand side, we've got our query settings. So we can also rename our query, but also we can now see the steps that have been used to get from source data um, where we do the querying and then putting that data into Power BI. And then lastly, we've got our filter bar at the top here, not a filter bar, sorry, our uh, formula bar at the top here, which relates to each step in the process. So if we step through each of the steps used for this task XLS, XLSX um, query, uh, hopefully we can get a better understanding of what's happening. So if we go into source, so this is the first thing that happens. You can see in our formula bar, we simply have an Excel workbook function and a file contents function as well, but we can see the file path of our required file. And once that's been entered in there, the first thing it does is it gives us this information here. So we can see within this file, there are four items, but specifically of interest to us, the top three, which is tasks, customers, and comments. And we can see that these are all sheets within the workbook. Uh, it's treated it as tables worth of data, but should we have an actual table in the file, you would see it recognized as a table here. Once that has been identified, we then need to do some navigation, as you can see step two here. And what Power Query has done, because we obviously selected tasks as our desired one, is it's gone into our formula and you can see it's saying the source should be the item called tasks. The, the kind is a sheet and obviously we want to pull the data. So item tasks kind sheet. So if we go back to our source, we can see if we look in here, yet yeah, the item is tasks and the kind is a sheet. So it's filtering on these two key uh, columns here. So it does its navigation and upon returning that, you can see it's brought through all of the data available to us uh, in that sheet. And this is what our table now is. However, Power Query is very clever and it's already made the identification that our column headers or our desired column headers are in the first row of the data. So it's treated them as data rather than like I say, as the column headers. So what it's done is used promoted headers to get them into the column headers. So if I click onto that, you can see they're moved up. And if you need to do this manually because you realize your data was in this state, all you need to do in the navigation home tab is you can see it says use first row as headers. So selecting that, will do just that. So if I select this now, you can see it's asking me, do I want to insert a step because I'm halfway down the steps already existing. So if I go on to insert, you can see it has done just that. Now, obviously this additional step here is now gonna produce uh, another step upwards. So what we'll do is just remove my step here, delete that, and you can see it's now back working as it should. And the last step that is applied is of course doing some formatting. So by default, if we again go back to the previous step, everything is currently being treated as uh, ABC number, so a bit of everything. However, what Power Query has been able to do is identify that some of our columns contain dates. So you can see they've been correctly formatted as dates, whereas all the other ones have correctly been now um, formatted as strings. 
So let's say we now want to uh, pull another piece of data from this same file. So what we could do, of course, is go through um, new source and then get data using the same steps we did previously. However, I want to show you how you can manually, you know, manipulate or work with this existing data to do just that. So let's go on right click on right click, sorry, on tasks XLSX, and all I'm going to do is simply go on to duplicate. And so we've got now number two, and everything is doing exactly the same. However, let's go and use something else. Let's say we want to, let me remind myself what we've got in here, go to source, uh, customers. So customers is another piece of information we may wish to bring into our report. So the first thing I'm gonna do is obviously rename this. So let's call this customer. Oh, if I can spell customers. We'll leave XLSX at the end there. And then I'll just remove the number two because this is no longer a duplicate. And you can see we've now got this new query here. And God, the just to be precise, I'm going to put a lowercase c there. Really doesn't matter, but there we go. So these steps that we have here won't be applicable to our customer data once we're obviously pulling through that applicable data. They're only obviously applicable to our task data. So what I'm going to do is just delete our last step, which is change type. I'm also going to remove promoted headers. And you can see I'm now at this navigation step. So at the moment, it's going to the item tasks, which is a sheet, and pulling in the data. But if I go to source, I can see my customers item is, of course, called customers. So if we click here, just so I can copy the value, go back to our navigation step. And all I'm going to do is paste in the word customers rather than task, hit enter. And you can see what's happened is it's now navigated to our customer data. And actually what it's done is it's changed the type. It hasn't actually done our promoted uh, headers, which is you know a bit of shame, but at the same time, it gives me a perfect example. So what I'm gonna do at this stage is just remove change type. So I go back to navigation. So this is now working as we want it. So what we need to do is make sure, as we've touched on many times now, that the actual column headers are in the column section. So what I'm gonna do from navigation is go use first row as headers. And you can see it's now added that step for promoted headers. Sorry, it sort of jumped there along. So it's promoted the headers and it's also changed the formatting to a string. And I can't remember if I mentioned earlier, but should we want to change these formats so maybe they're not string, all we need to do is click on the top left for each column and you can desire, oh, select your desired format. So now we have uh, an additional data set, which is customers, which we've been able to do semi-manually <laughs> because obviously we copied the existing task one. But hopefully that you know gives a good example of the steps required to get this data into our report. And of course, the very last step we need to do just to get this data in our report is to close and apply. So the button at the top left here, Ultimately, all that's going to do is you know, close our Power Query editor and ensure these new additions are reflected in our report. So I'll click that button and you know, quickly at the first, we can see we've only got the two tables initially. It's obviously going through and just updating our formulas. And we can now see we've now got this customer data available to us in our report. So at this stage, as always, I recommend just you know trying to repeat the steps we've done in this video just to start familiarizing yourself with those features in Power Query. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.